Well, good evening. Um, well, thank you for having me. I'm very nervous. Nervous about talking. Uh, because I've never done anything like this. I can talk nonsense. But I'm not <laughs> really. But I'm not experienced with like organized talk. Um, well, I would like to just share basically what I had with Dr. Suzuki. As a young child, I, I've known him. Apparently, at one of the summer schools that I attended, you know, my parents attended, when I was about 10, 15 months old, he actually picked me up.
he's you know, just playing songs, but he has such a delightful life force, so much energy. Um, when, I was, when I started, he was about 70 years old, I think. Um, so, around the time I, I knew him, he was like 75, 77, well, he's not that young, but still he's jumping off the stage and um, running around the stage. Oh, it was amazing. Um, at that Japanese summer school, um, during the morning tutorial class, um, he always took the post book 10 class. And as a young pre book 10 student, that class was like the dream class. And that class, the only class that held in the air conditioned room. Because <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we all had the uh, like old school classrooms. And uh, we were Japanese summer, pretty hot, uh, quite humid. So uh, during the morning session, we all get soaked with sweat. And coming into the, um, the Suzuki, the Japanese Matsumoto Suzuki Institute, it's just air conditioned. We just felt, ah, this is so nice. And, you know, and sometimes when the class, well, that Dr. Suzuki's class goes over time, we went up to have a look. And him just working with some children. We all said, wow, one day. <laughs> And that, that itself was such a motivation, you know. Next year, maybe, maybe not, but one day, I'm going to be at his class. <laughs> so he, you, you get to spend more time with him every day. And that was, yeah. And once you made the class, you feel just, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, Japanese summer school, went for about four days. But because the facility wasn't really big enough to accommodate all the participants, so we had uh, two sessions of summer school. Four days at the beginning half and four days at the end. And once I made the, uh, what, his class, I wanted that in the whole eight days. So, Try to negotiate with my parents. <laughs> well, it's not cheap to sort of stay all that long and pay twice the amount of accommodation fees and participation fees and everything. But it was just, that was my summer, this is summer holiday, but that was really like summer heaven. <coughs> um, and I just, like a child, my, when I was a child, I, I liked him just so much. And it's like, you know, your dream to be one day like Dr. Suzuki. You know, like when you do tennis, you're going to be like a Roger Fiddler, or you know, when you play golf, you know, I'm going to be like such and such. And in my case, it was just, oh, one day I'm going to be like Dr. Suzuki. Um, no, actually, and I was just so fortunate that my, my teacher um, was kind of like one of the uh, original starters, start-up Suzuki teachers. And uh, Dr. Suzuki and my teacher had such a trusting sort of relationship. And I felt the trust and respect and love <coughs> from my teacher towards Dr. <coughs> and he, my teacher often told me how great Dr. Suzuki is, not only just how he plays violin, but as a person, how inspiring he is, and how his humanity, his love. So 
I came to in touch with Dr. Suzuki through my teacher. And I think that was a great gift to me that I got to know Dr. Suzuki through such a, oh, a great teacher. And when my teacher, well, my, and well, when we go to summer school, I mean, we stay, my, myself and, well, all of his class, students and families, stay in one accommodation. And around Matsumoto, there's lo there are also lots of hot springs, and hot springs that you can go in, like, 24 hours. So, first thing in the morning, that I knocked on my teacher's room, and take him, go to the uh, hot springs together. It's almost like a grandpa and a grandson. And we sort of, you know, just have a bath together. I sort of brushed his back. <laughs> <laughs> and we, I said, I don't know, I, I, I like my teacher so much. Although, he was so scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his nickname was Atomic Bomb. <laughs> not very appropriate for a Japanese person. <laughs> but uh, he was, my, my teacher was known to be so scary. But I like him. <laughs> and, you know, I often had the experience when he's not happy, when, when I open the studio door, you know, because A is very heavy. Uh, uh, doesn't matter what I try, my day is over. <laughs> um, but I knew it. he was just so serious about um, his doing. It's, it's not only just violin teaching, it's not only just about music. Uh, it was about human education. And it was about him evolving himself to be a better person. But it didn't change him being an atomic bomb. <laughs> um, but what, um, when, when I was nine at summer school breakfast time, I still remember, he said to me, you became a Suzuki teacher one day. And I, I remember I just said, yes, I will. That was that. And I'm, I don't know, I just felt my, I'm on the rail, just like a train. The rail is laid down, I didn't have to decide what I'm going to do. Or in a lot of cases, you know, like my friends at school, what are you going to do when you grow up? Oh, I don't know. Well, maybe go to a nice union and make lots of money. Um, yeah, I, I was just fortunate, I was lucky. And I even got sort of bullied because I played the violin, so it's such a girly thing to do. <laughs> and often, you know, play, you know, after school, you know, friends say, let's play. I said, oh, I can't play because I have to practice. <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't stop me, you know, playing violin because I loved my teacher and loved Dr. Suzuki. And um, I still remember. He, he, well, as, as you know, he was the serious person I ever knew. One, one, one time I got, kind of got into trouble because whatever I was doing was not good enough. And he said to me, you know, during the lesson between you and I, it's like a sword fight. Either you kill me, or I kill you. <laughs> I'm putting my life on this. So do you. Now play. <laughs> no, but I felt that, I mean, he gets really cross. You kind of feel, I know, I know he's not a baby, he's not a punchy or anything, but you felt that energy that can I get out of this door today alive? <laughs> I mean it's not abusive or anything, just that 
energy. And my lesson was on Thursday every week. And my life goes around the lesson. So it doesn't matter what I, how I played or how I did my lesson. Friday is like heaven. <laughs> Saturday is still okay. Man, uh, Sunday comes. I start to get nervous. Monday, I start to really panic practice. <laughs> well, when you panic practice, nothing really goes there. <laughs> and my, my mom often says, ah, that's not quite right. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> and, you know, when I was about like 11, 12, growing up, Mouth and blow, you know, Mom, I can play violin, you can't play. <laughs> you know, if you really want to tell me, show me how to play. <laughs> anyway, this I, I think I'm doing pretty well, sort of thing. And my mom says, well, then next week when you go to a lesson, the teacher will say this and that and that. <laughs> and I don't even know, sort of thing. <laughs> and certainly, he says this and that, that, that. And my judge goes, <laughs> and it's not me who gets into trouble, it's my mum. <laughs> She's the one supposed to practice me at home. So my teacher goes, what are you doing? <laughs> and my mum just goes, <laughs>
you may need to play by your okay. cat. But how would you guide and teach parents to be better parents with the idea of Suzuki philosophy and Suzuki method? That's, he said, that's nearly impossible. So, truly, if you, be, if you try to become a Suzuki teacher, you need a lot more life experience rather than just finish school, go to Dr. Suzuki and become a teacher. You teach nothing. And I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> because I was just about to tell you, I would like to go to Dr. Suzuki's <laughs> place, plan B. <laughs> but, but there's no plan B because I never thought of going to uni or anything. So, um, but I tried, tried some university exams and I failed because I never studied um, all the subjects. So I spent about two years trying to study, but trying to practice to, I don't know what I'm doing, sort of thing. Um, when I was 20, um, Dr. Suzuki was 87, um, he had a horrible injury in America and his shoulder became so bad he couldn't even lift the hand up. And you know, at the age of 87 or something, I mean, you have a huge accident, your life can go. I said, oh my goodness, this might be the end of Dr. Suzuki's surgery. And I sort of told my, told the, my teacher, although I'm not really going go to uni or anything, but uh, Dr. Suzuki had a whole injury and he's not young. Um, I would like to go to Matsumoto and be with him. <coughs> May I or something? And he said, yes. Because I, I thought he would he would never say yes. He said yes, I said, what did you just say? Couldn't you hear me? I said yes. <laughs> <coughs> and, and he just told me, uh, try to understand Dr. Suzuki as much as possible. But I, I didn't particularly thinking I was going to Matsumoto to study how to play violin really, really hard. Um, it sounds a bit snobbish, but I thought my teacher was as good as Dr. Suzuki, as a teacher. And I just want to see Dr. Suzuki every day, not only when he was teaching, but his just life generally, what he was really like as a person. Um, so I went to Matsumoto. And, and at Matsumoto school, we weren't really taught how to teach either. I mean, we had a lesson with Dr. Suzuki every week, and we had a group lesson every day. Um, but it's almost all about how to become more sensitive, how to be more alert, and how to serve for others, how to be selfless, um, which was, I didn't get it then. I tried to practice so hard in the way. And, you know, you want, you want to, you wanted to get Dr. Suzuki to say, yes, you've done really well, you're improving. So I practiced, well, I thought I was hard, practicing hard. And I want to say, I want Dr. Suzuki to say that, that was good for him. Uh, he never kind of said yes, that, that was good. Um, but he said, you sound very much like me, 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 me. You know, come to Masumoto, there's no place for me, me, me. Look around. And often that was the lesson. I still didn't get it. Why did he have to tell me about that? Practicing so hard. You know, but that was a big lesson, thinking back that you try to serve for others. 
as you receive uh, your care, love, music, it's there to be used for others. And that, that lesson is still with me, and that's probably with me, probably to, to the end. Because it's a, well, that's, that's how I think we learn. We, we receive something from our parents, from older people, and with love, and as we digest that, um, it's to hand over to the next generation. Um, but Dr. Suzuki was not always serious. I mean, he was such a funny, funny person as well, fun loving. And I had pretty funny um, things to share too. Um, although Sunday was officially an off day, but Dr. Suzuki comes to the institute every day. He says, I have nothing at home to do, might as well come. And he comes then he says, well, let's have a group lesson. So, 9 o'clock till 10.30 group lesson was on every day. Doesn't matter what day it was. <coughs> um, but Sunday is really officially a day off. And especially in winter, I used to love skiing. I was a ski man. And, you know, maybe Sunday I could go skiing. And, and Matsumoto is not far from all of those skiing areas. And I could quite easily hop on the train and go. And I used to live almost like around the corner from the Suzuki Institute. So he go in the Monday, you know, Sunday, Sunday morning, pretty early, carrying my skis and walking to the station. And right in front of the institute, I met Dr. Suzuki. I said, he said, good morning. What are you carrying? It's pretty obvious. It's not violin. And he goes, okay, you're going skiing instead of having violin lessons. Fine. <laughs> uh, wait. And the Monday morning, this is horrible. Got the group lesson, and he says, How was your skiing like yesterday? <laughs> oh, great. I'm perfect. Uh, I wonder why your sound is so sweeping. <laughs> your boy is sliding. And uh, he said, Well, skiing is all about how to, you know, how to take nice balance, isn't it? How come you can't even take the balance of the book? <laughs> and it goes on, 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 on. <laughs> so next time when I go skiing, I try to be extra early. <laughs> but obviously, even if you go extra early, I'm not going to be at the group place now. So Monday comes, where were you yesterday? <laughs> and it just goes on like that. And, but, I suppose that's just his sense of humor, yet he goes straight through the middle, never misses anything. And also every year, the Matsumoto Suzuki uh, Institute has a, like a kindergarten and preschool. And we have kindergarten sports carnival there. And as we go and help around, uh, and there's like a parent's, parents race. And we, we go on the parents' race too. And here comes Dr. Suzuki. Let me join. <laughs> he is age of like AA. And, and all the Suzuki Institute workers come after him because, you know, if he fell over or something, it's disaster. So then please don't, please don't get on the earth. Get on. <laughs> and he sort of lines up. And he sort of whispers, it's a pretty loud whisper, but I am going to win this race. <laughs> Don't you dare go in front of me. <laughs> I have to win. <laughs> I'm number.
number one. So that race went so slow. <laughs> Although 
He wasn't brought up in Suzuki Method, but I think his family life was really Suzuki Method, Suzuki philosophy. And I see the, one of the best possible uh, result in Dr. Suzuki as Suzuki Method's result of child upbringing. And I just wish for all of us to uh, just to be as good as we can be, try to be better, um, to make what well, not only this world a better place to live, but today we have more concerns about not only our relations, but there's a huge problem of the environment, of uh, so many things, and I think I couldn't really say this is really what I can do to help, but um, with the help of families, try to bring up next generations, not only being musical, but all of those important qualities as a human being um, to be found in them and nurture it. And one day they become like self-sufficient that they start, well, taking their own responsibility. And hopefully they, we all have a good sense of being <coughs> a great human being. And I'm just grateful 